Okay, let's take a look at how we use thermodynamic information to solve for the boiling point. So we got a couple things here uh, that we have to pay attention to. One is we're gonna use this equation, delta G Uh, but we need to solve for temperature. So a couple things need to happen. First, we got to write the correct equation. So we got NH3, and if we're looking at boiling point, what is the equation? So we're not doing a, any chemical change, but we're doing a phase change. And so we're going from a liquid to a gas. So that's important. The other important thing is understanding that delta G is equal to zero at either the melting or the boiling point. Uh, and that's because, you know, we have these heating curves, we're dealing with the intermolecular forces. Uh, and so we're at this equilibrium point when we're melting or boiling. So delta G is at zero because the temperature is not changing. Uh, everywhere else we have a delta T. So we're going to rearrange this algebraically. We get T equals delta H minus delta G over delta S. Now delta G is equal to zero, so that goes away. So we get delta H over delta S. So where do those values come from? So we're looking for ammonia. We're gonna, we're gonna open our data tab here. And you're gonna see thermodynamic properties of pure substances. We're gonna open that and we're gonna see a couple things here. We're gonna see, we're gonna use delta H and we're gonna use delta S. Notice joules, kilojoules. We are going to have to adjust that because we cannot divide uh, kilojoules up here by joules down here. That's going to cause problems. So we're going to have to adjust uh, those to both be kilojoules or both joules. Uh, then we're going to scroll and we're going to find NH3. Here we go. And we got a bunch of them, but what we're looking for is the liquid state and the gas state. Here we have the entropy. Notice the gas entropy is higher, which is expected. And then we have these. So we're going to write these down. Okay, so now we're going to solve for delta H, which is that sum of the products minus sum of the reactants. We don't have any, uh, it's all, everything, all this is going to be one to one because we're just doing a phase change. So we're going to do our products, which is negative 45.9, and we're gonna subtract our reactants, 69.5. And we're gonna get 23.6 kilojoules per mole. Then we're gonna solve for, and that makes sense, right? Positive enthalpy, because uh, we're going from liquid to gas. If I put my uh, water on the pot, or on the stove in a pot, it's not gonna just turn into gas, sitting there, I got to put energy in. So that enthalpy should be positive. The, the entropy should be positive as well, because we're going from a liquid to a gas, more energy spread out, uh, more randomness. Same idea, products minus reactants. And so I'm going to go uh, 192.8 minus 95.8. And I'm going to get 97.71, and this is joules per mole Kelvin. So I'm going to divide by a thousand kilojoules. Okay, so I'm going to uh, divide 23.6 kilojoules per mole over everything cancels, but. Kelvin, which comes up to the top, and I get 241.53 Kelvin. Now it asks for Celsius, so I'm going to minus 273.15, and I get negative 31.62 degrees Celsius. Now, uh, this is ammonia, so it's uh, the gas at, this is telling me it's a gas at room temperature. So I'm going to plug this in. It likes that decimal point. So I'm going to say nearest degree, it says up here. I'm going to say negative 32 degrees. 
There we go. So uh, a lot to this, this delta G being equal to zero, we're rearranging our equation, solving for T, uh, and then writing our equation correctly, because you might think, well, if delta G is zero for melting and boiling, how can I solve for the different temperatures? Well, if you were looking at melting, you would write NH3 solid to NH3 liquid, and you would have different values for all of these. And so you'd end up with a different number uh, than the boiling point. So you can solve for boiling or melting using this process. 